Hello, everyone. Are you enjoying Microsoft 365 Dev Camp? The answer is yes. The answer is yes. Okay, so you've heard a lot about declarative agents from Bob and Friends, but we thought, you know what? We're gonna we're gonna bring in an expert to get a little more behind the scenes drama, okay? Because <laughs> declarative agents are actually super, super cool because they're easy to create, easy to customize, and do stuff with. So we decided to pull Jeremy, who works on the product team, to come and explain himself and his product. Hi. Hey, how are you? I'm great. How are you? I love the way you say expert. Expert. Is anyone really an expert in AI at this point? Well, I would say no one and everyone if you agree to the Twitter bros, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so tell us, what is a declarative agent for people who have absolutely no idea what we're talking about? Yeah, good question. So there are Copilot agents, mm -hmm. which can live inside of BizChat and Teams. Mm -hmm. uh, there are two types. Okay. There's declarative agents mm -hmm. and there's custom engine agents. Yes. The way I like to compare the two is a declarative agent is something where effectively as a developer, you're writing a bunch of JSON files yes. to declare, declaratively explain, mm -hmm. hey, you see, mm -hmm. what an agent does. And that can be instructions about the agent. Yes. It can be things like capabilities, yes. as well as things like, I want a plugin or a graph connector as part mm -hmm. of this agent. The custom engine agent is more about bringing your own model, bringing your own orchestrator, yeah. It's a lot DIY. more sophisticated. Yeah, yeah. you've got like to bring DIY. all that with you. Yes, or so, you build it some AI solution somewhere and migrate it over here. That's right. And so for me, it's the benefit of the fact that you've already invested in mm -hmm. Copilot as a yes. license in M365, yes. and you have the ability to go create these agents right. without investing in additional infrastructure and get right. all the beautiful things that we get out of our orchestrator and our model. Okay, so yep. this is a very good way for people to get started with agentic capabilities in Microsoft 365 because it's an, you can just see what's yeah, out of the box. It's an awesome way if you're just starting to play, mm -hmm. you don't have to go to your boss and go, hey, mm -hmm. I need an Azure resource. Can you no. give me a finance and budget? Yes. If you've got a Copilot license you're mm -hmm. using for your normal job, mm -hmm. which I use every day and love it, every day. you can also then go build your own. Mm -hmm. And you can build them um, inside of Agent Builder, which mm -hmm. is built directly into BizChat. Yes. Yes. And even as a developer, like I still like doing that because it's very quick to get going with yes. things. But then once you've ideated there, you then want to pull into ProCode into Visual Studio yes. because then you have the ability to do things like connect it to graph connectors that's and build right. your own plugins that go and point to other API services. Right. And that's what really unlocks the world of like yes. how far a declarative agent can go without needing your own model on your orchestrator. I, I think there's so much you can do with it because just <clears> yesterday <throat> in preparation for this, I created my own declarative agent there we go. that teaches me to do, resp do a responsible AI, air quotes, as a developer. Like, what exactly does transparency mean in responsible AI yep. in some sort of an AI product, right? I don't know. Um, it turns out it's way simpler than I thought, but I had my agent explain it to me. So I think it's very powerful that you can start with, hey, point to SharePoint site, ground in this data. Yep. Suddenly you've got an agent ready to rock. But once you say, it, actually, I've got, you know, an API to the service over here, or I've got this third-party data store, I want to actually do the graph connector thing. I want to go, you know, do a two-way connector. I actually can do that right from M365 BizChat or Teams or whatever it is. Yeah. Um, just out of the box. And, and I think the nice thing is, is that there is a lot of power in those instructions. Mm -hmm. So when you're yeah. writing the instructions to explain mm -hmm. what your agent can do, and yeah. we've just put a new page online mm -hmm. that gives you examples of the instructions to really make it rock. Right. And different things you can do about how it challenges you on questions. Right. Like, you open up your agent, you start having a conversation. If you're not feeding it the information it needs mm -hmm. to help you, it prods you and promote, you know, right. approach you to get that information off of you. Yeah. So it's much more advanced than what I think people initially thought you could do yeah. with just a bunch of declarative instructions. Yeah. But the real, real power is on top of those instructions is getting at those external systems. That's exactly it. And so for That's me, exactly um, if I want to go get updates on my team and what they're working on, mm -hmm. I've basically built one that uses the uh, an API plugin to connect to GitHub. Oh, and I'm just asking boy, my declarative like agent, you know, what's the status of this project? Mm -hmm. And it's going to go get me the answers from GitHub and respond. Yeah. Um, if I'm using the product and I have issues, I can mm -hmm. create an issue straight from the agent and it will go create it in that GitHub repo. So I never have to leave that tool. I can what? have a conversation. Okay. So, and that's really simple to do. Yeah. Um, what I love is, yeah. first of all, this really helps your team because now Jeremy is <clears> not like, hey, where are you at with this thing? They're like, <laughs> That's go, right. look, go look in GitHub boss. And now your agent can actually do it for you. Right. And it's, it's not just that like one system. No. Like they're the Viva goals where we mm -hmm. track all of our OKRs. I yes. can just ask that one agent and yeah. get answers both off GitHub mm -hmm. and from Viva goals in one place. And so I think if developers in an enterprise or if you're an mm -hmm. ISV, mm -hmm. you're thinking those scenarios of these multi-system type things mm -hmm. that need a question that yeah. an agent can answer. 
th this very simple concept can really open up a whole um, slew of things that you can go solve. And you know, taking it back to your business and yeah. showing different business units within your org, mm -hmm. this is what you can do, I think is killer. Yeah, I, I love just these scenarios because this is something every engineer, engineering manager, every leader, honestly, you've got somewhere where you track work yep. and somewhere where you're tracking goals. And to be able to put them together and say, how are you tracking towards your goals? versus having to go now create a slide deck and have to like correspond yeah. these. And, and the nice thing yeah. is like even today, um, I was talking to one of the people in my team and I was gonna go scramble over to my calendar like, when's my next one-on-one -on -one with her? Because <laughs> I really wanna like talk about this in more depth. Yeah. And in the one-on-one -on -one chat with Teams, I at mentioned Copilot, the yes, bigger Copilot, right. um, and said, when's my next one-on-one -on -one with Maisa? And it answered. Mm. Hey! And I was like, and she saw the I answer like too. That. And like so that. again, yeah. there's all these like solving things you can do with agents, yeah. not just in living in biz chat, mm -hmm. but inside of teams. And that can be in a one-on-one -on -one chat, a group chat or a channel chat. And so there are lots of times where maybe I want to share the GitHub status of a particular yes. issue. I'm in a channel with the team. Mm -hmm. I don't have to go into GitHub, copy and paste it over and do yeah. it. I just ask the agent in line and it responds. Yeah. And if someone goes, oh, that status is wrong, they can at mention the agent and go right. update the status of that issue. And so there's going to be a lot of those interactions that you don't have to be in biz chat, you can be yeah. in teams. Yeah. And then the other really brilliant thing that we're introducing is now you better do that in Word and PowerPoint and Outlook as well. Oh, I like that. So if I'm in Word, I'm yeah. drafting a spec. Yes. I can have biz chat on the side there yes. and ask it questions. Yeah. And then for now, the response you can copy and paste into Word for yes, now. For now. But in the very future, you'll be able to tell the declarative agent to just inject that thing into the Word document or inject yeah. it into the slide. And so effectively, you're building your Word document by having a conversation with the agent based on your business data, not just within M365 yeah. realms, but every oh, other system everything. you've got connected to too. You know what I love about this? You're meeting devs where they are because you're saying the tools you use are GitHub, our Teams, you know, our BizChat, whatever, whatever, and Zoom yeah. Word PowerPoint because necessarily evil, right, for, for devs even to get out of Visual Studio and actually go communicate using yep. words. And you, what you're doing is giving every dev their own project manager that they can use to kind of track the status of what they're working on without them having to take so much time out yeah. to actually draft this. I already have like decision. seven or eight declarative agents I've built really? that I use every day. Yeah. And so I think that's just going to be a pattern we see, yeah. both built in Agent Builder, but yeah. also in Visual Studio where I'm like, yes. oh, okay, I can't quite do that in Agent yeah. Builder. Now it's time to get out of Visual Studio yes. and start using the toolkit and building these yeah. themselves. I love that. Yeah. Okay, so so many options. Everyone go and try it. But what what is some advice you have for devs to say, how do you get the most out of these tools? Yeah, I think in with a lot of tech, the playground and just trying things, mm -hmm. I think about something that is really repetitive to do. Yes. And like, is that something I could script into instructions? And is there a system that I'm going to in a web browser mm -hmm. where I could just get the API call and wrap that up in an API plugin and get it through? Yeah. Um, that's gonna be the quickest way to success. Yeah. And then showcase that with your team, showcase yeah. it with your org. I love that. And then it just opens up a wealth of opportunities. And then they'll start coming back to you going, hey, we'd really like an agent that plugs into our sales mm -hmm. thing or plugs into this thing. And um, once you've got that rhythm going in the toolkit of connecting through, it makes things yeah. super easy. I love this because you're saying, what is a thing you do a lot? And probably every person around you also does this and figure out how you can invite AI to participate and help just make this easier for you. And, and I think yeah. the future is the AI is going to get better. That's right. Our agents will right. get better. The models and will get better. Eventually, get better. we'll get to this agentic mm -hmm. level that they'll be talking to each other right. and you'll kick one off yeah. and it will go tell another yes. thing and do another thing and yes. then it will just make our lives a lot easier. Right. And yeah. then we can go on vacation more. That's right. Which exactly. is the ultimate goal. <laughs> All right. So, Jeremy, thank you so much for being here. No, you're welcome. And all of you, thank you for tuning in. Um, to find out more, you're going to go to aka.ms, Copilot Dev Camp, okay? aka.ms, Copilot Dev Camp. And now we're going to ship you back to Waldeck and Gary. <laughs>